Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. So, pack one, pick one. We've got a pretty stacked pack here. Giant Killer is a rare, this card's great. The adventure can often kill something and then the creature half is great too. Tapper creatures have historically been very good and I don't think this one is any different. Then uh, Matt Ratter has a nice payoff card for the blue-red draw 2 deck. Definitely decent uh, uncommon to try and build around. The Innkeeper of course is great, as we all know. Probably one of the best, if not the best, uncommon in the set. Drown in the Lock, also a nice one for the blue-black control slash mill deck. And we've got some other nice blue cards here for that controlling deck. Charm Sleep, so tiny. So tiny can in the mill deck definitely be better than Charm Sleep sometimes, as being one mana, which is cheaper, and also Flash, so it plays well with uh, counter spells like Didn't Say Please. The Witching Well, decent card draw spell for that deck as well. Reef Soul, great removal too. So a lot of powerful cards for like the blue-black mill control deck here. And then we have an Innkeeper and a Giant Killer as probably the two best cards in the pack overall. I think green overall is probably slightly better than white in this set so far. And Giant Killer might individually be a better card than the Innkeeper, but it's still close. Like if you get a good adventure deck, the Innkeeper can definitely provide a much bigger advantage. And it's not too difficult to get a good adventure deck or just pick up some random adventure creatures. So it might still be the Innkeeper over Giant Killer here. We're seeing a bunch of white cards, but they're all kind of underwhelming. I guess Flutter Fox is maybe the more exciting white card had we taken the Giant Killer. This might have been my second pick. But uh, Out Muscle, pretty solid removal in green. And uh, yeah, we have a first pick Innkeeper. Out Muscle might just be the best card in the pack anyway. Trebuchet is also a nice one in some of the Red Knight decks. So don't see a reason to deviate. And yeah, I'm a pretty big fan of the Acolyte, just as a nice ramp creature. The adventure part can also like fix your mana in the early turns if you need to cast a cheap removal spell in a different color, for example. It's an adventure for the Innkeeper. And the adventure decks often want to get up to a lot of mana for cards like Reaper of Night and the Tree Folk anyway, so having the ramp from Acolyte is perfect. And otherwise, the Spider could be a nice defensive card, could just take the Reaper, since the Adventure deck often ends up green-black. The Wicked Guardian also has a good synergy with cards like Acolyte and Curious Pair, but I'm just gonna stick to the Acolyte for now, since we're definitely green, but we don't know for sure if we're black. Now we've got some reasons to potentially deviate, although there is another Acolyte, which would be totally fine. So the Sage of the Falls is definitely a powerful card draw engine. Of course, at its best in the blue-red draw 2 deck, but still totally fine card draw engine elsewhere. And there's a Secret Keeper if we want to try and make the mill deck work, although that's typically better blue-black over blue-green. So might just take another Acolyte here and not commit to a second color yet, since again this is a totally serviceable card in the deck we're trying to build here. Alright, so now we've got a reason to deviate. Well, not exactly deviate, just commit to a second color maybe with a Merrileaf Pixie. Another mana ramp creature, but this one's great as an attacker as well. Two mana, two, two flyers, very efficient. And that would give us three mana ramp creatures already, so we can pick some pretty expensive cards and realistically be able to cast them. Other good cards in the pack, of course, Covetous Urge is very good. Kind of a built-in two-for-one but it's going to be difficult to cast early, given how many green cards we already have. And you do really want to be able to cast this turn 4, preferably. Otherwise, the discard effect loses some value. So yeah, let's take the Pixie. No mono green card I really want to take here. Alright, so now we've got a decision. I can take the Secret Keeper, which is another adventure creature for the Innkeeper, and could maybe set us up for a mill deck. Could take, let's say, the Scavengers, although... Outside of food tokens, we don't expect to get a ton of artifacts or enchantments in blue-green. And Appetites could also work well with uh, food tokens as kind of a, an insta-speed combo trick. 
could also speculate on the witch's cottage in case we do end up black instead of blue after all but then we need to commit pretty heavily to black in order to have uh, three swamps in play. I think I'll take the Secret Keeper. Hellbirds. Maybe not exactly the card we need. I think this card is like fine in the red-green decks that care more about beating down. Blue-green is usually more about just drawing a ton of cards and eventually playing some big adventures to close out the game. Or if we get enough Secret Keepers, we could maybe mill the opponent out. And the Halberd doesn't really fit into any of those two game plans. But the Scavengers could be okay as kind of a way to buy some time in the late game. And hopefully we'll have some food tokens to synergize with it. Nothing here that really stands out. Could take the Ginger Brute in case we need some food synergies. But I'm not really interested in the 1-1 Haste part of the card. Scarecrow is kind of medium as a 4 mana 2-4. But the mana fixing in combination with the Acolyte could maybe help me splash some powerful bombs in other colors. So that's a consideration. So I guess I'll speculate on the Scarecrow. And ninth pick, we did wheel so tiny and then say please out of that one pack that had a lot of powerful blue-black control cards. So either one of them would be fine. I seem to be a more tap-out deck, like we don't have a ton of instant speed things to do. So keeping up... A 3 mana counter spell isn't the easiest. So Tiny could be fine, since again, the drawback of So Tiny is of course that the opponent still gets to block with the enchanted creature, even if it doesn't have any power. But our deck is usually not too worried about that, since we can often end the game with a very large creature anyway that can get past whatever we shrunk down with the So Tiny. So I think I'll take that for now. Blue-green also usually struggles to get removal, so between Out Muscle and So Tiny, we'll have a couple removal spells already. And in case we do end up black after all, I'll probably just take the Forever Young. Don't think I'm ever playing Wolf's Quarry. Maybe I'll need a Weapon Rack. And I'll take another So Tiny over the Cottage. Alright, so we're definitely looking to be blue-green, but it's possible I can abandon blue if I open some great rare in another color. Like, I could easily still be green-black, for example, since black has some nice adventures. Alright, what did we open? Ayara's a powerful card, but it's going to be difficult to cast unless we're heavy black. We've got the Flax and Intruder, which could synergize with the Innkeeper, but if we don't have a Clover, this card is not too exciting. 7 mana for 3 2 twos is not a great rate. But uh, yeah, if we do get a Clover, then the Intruder could be pretty strong. Uh, Reef Soul, probably the best card in the pack outside of Ayara. There's no like blue or green card I'm too excited about in this pack. Could take an unexplained vision as a way to refuel in the late game. And it is not a bad card in this deck since we have a lot of mana creatures. So we can kind of develop our mana early. And then vision could be a nice way to refuel and find more action. It's either that or I can speculate on intruder in case I get some clovers. But the intruder has been known to wheel. Although you never know that might have changed now with the updated bots. And otherwise I could speculate on Reef Soul in case I do end up green-black or maybe even blue-black after all, if I abandon green somehow. I think I'll take the vision. What do we have here? Not much for the deck, to be honest. Another so tiny, perhaps. Scalding Cauldron could be a removal too. Don't think we're interested in the oven or the puppets. And this is more of a sideboard card that we can probably get later. And we're not trying to beat down with Tracker. Probably take the Cauldron, can maybe take out some utility creatures where So Tiny is not very effective. But yeah, not an exciting second pick. Alright, now we've got some more options. So Sir Farron, a great card if we're trying to beat down, but again, I don't think that's what our deck is all about. And Double Green on turn 2 is also not the easiest. But uh, a third Acolyte would be good, another Out Muscle would be good, Witching Well for more card draw would be good. Don't have any food synergy for the rider at the moment. 
And Reaper of Night is also a card I could potentially fit into the deck with enough mana fixing from cards like Acolyte and Scarecrow, although a double black for the actual creature half of the card can be somewhat problematic. Probably between Out Muscle and Acolyte, and I think I'm still leaning Out Muscle. I'm more likely to get more Acolytes later, I think, and just shoring up the removal is nice. I will need to start picking up some large creatures to go with these Out Muscles. But uh, yeah, this pack delivers with both Adversary and Tree Folk as cards I'm interested in. Probably gonna take the Adversary since this card is very efficient, especially for playing against a green deck. But just a 2-3 Death Touch with that ability is great. And then can hope to pick up some Tree Folks later as uh, nice curve toppers to take advantage of all the mana we can generate and synergy with the Innkeeper. Alright, we're seeing lots of Acolytes this draft. Savvy Hunter is also a very strong card. Could maybe even be worth splashing, although typically these types of creatures we want to be able to cast on curve, so having black mana turn 3, not the easiest, although I can use the Acolytes Adventure to fix for black mana as well, so I can potentially still play the Savvy Hunter on curve. But yeah, outside of Savvy Hunter we don't have any food synergies, so it would have to provide its own food, which is not a given. But uh, of course I could still pick up some more food cards in the next couple packs. If I don't take Savvy Hunter, what do I take? Don't think this deck needs the Squire, since we're not trying to beat down. I didn't say Police would be decent, now that we picked up those two So Tinies to synergize with it. Another Acolyte, of course, would be fine. Spider would be fine. I could see taking the Savvy Hunter and then try and pick up some more food cards. Because sacking two foods to draw a card is often better than six life you would get. It is less likely to make the deck than another Acolyte or a Didn't Say Please. But when we have all these Acolytes, we also kind of want to take advantage of their mana fixing capabilities to an extent. So maybe this is a spot where I'm supposed to take the slightly more powerful card, even if it's maybe not the easiest to cast. I think I'll try it. All right. Um, don't think our deck has great synergy with Mystic Sanctuary. Don't have a lot of uh, instants and sorceries to get back. And getting three islands is also not trivial. Tome Raider is a fine card and Charm Sleep is good removal. So probably just take the Charm Sleep. Like Wonder Mare could be another powerful card we can try and splash with the Acolyte. But it's probably weaker than the Savvy Hunter overall. So I would rather splash black than white. And I don't think we can splash both. So I'll take the Charm Sleep for now. Opt is also a totally serviceable card. And I've had some good experiences with Once and Future. And there's no other card I'm too excited about here, so... We'll pick that up. Alright, so Mystic Sanctuary versus Secret Keeper. So the uh, Once and Future does exile itself, so I can get it back with the Mystic Sanctuary. So our number of instants and sorceries didn't really increase in the meantime. Another Secret Keeper could be fine to enable so tinies, just a early blocker, and draws card with Innkeeper. Probably take Felda Pheasants for the sideboard over Dispute since I'm pretty weak to Flyers at the moment. Don't have any Reach creatures yet, don't have any Flyers myself outside of the Pixie. And it could also make food for my Savvy Hunter. Probably take the third so tiny over the second fell for the sideboard though. So our deck actually has quite a bit of removal in it. Three so tinies two out muscles and a charm sleep. What our deck is missing is some curve toppers, so hoping to get a couple copies of the tree folk, for example, in the last pack. Looking at our curve, we also don't have a ton of action on turn two, since I'm probably not playing the Forever Young. So yeah, we don't have much going on in the early turns. Probably not playing the weapon rack. Scarecrow's unlikely to make the cuts. And these are more late game cards anyway. So this is a more accurate picture of how the curve looks like. And it's a little bit clunky. So picking up the Merleaf Rider seems fine. Um, good synergy with the Savvy Hunter. 
and I could pick up some more food cards to make it better. Ginger Brood, of course, also food to go with the Hunter, but I think Rider is probably more overall what we need. And yeah, there's a Tree Folk, perfect, so that's what we needed. Cabin would also be a card I would definitely consider taking, since we are probably going to be pretty heavy green, and it's food for all the food synergies. But I think, at the end of the day, one Tree Folk is going to be more important than one Cabin, in case we don't get another Tree Folk in the last pack. And then say please, could definitely make the cuts. Good synergy with the So Tiny's. And we even got the Sanctuary, although I'm not sure if we'll play it. Alright, so heading into the last pack, what does our deck need? Some good 2-drops, some more food synergies, some more adventure synergies. So another Innkeeper, of course, would be great. Lucky Clover, maybe, if we're trying to mill the opponent out as our win condition. A uh, couple more 4 and 5 drops wouldn't hurt. So we still have a couple of gaps to fill in. But uh, Sage of the Falls could be a nice one, just as a 5 mana 2-5, so a decent blocker. And then can help us draw some more cards in late game, so we don't run out of steam. Embercleave, of course, a very powerful card, but don't think we're casting it. And then we can hope to wield a Spore Cap Spider to have a bit more action against flying creatures. Alright, well, the Gargoyle could actually be decent in our deck. 2 mana 5-4, can only attack if the opponent has 7 or more cards in their graveyard, which we can enable with our Secret Keepers and or Didn't Say Please. And of course it can also enable itself with the tap ability. If we have 4 or more cards in hand, it can block, and we're looking for more cheap defensive creatures, so this is pretty decent pickup. Um, not our Outmuscle would be okay, but the Gargoyle is also good with the Outmuscle, just being a large creature that we can play early, so the turn 4 Outmuscle can take out something significant. Alright, two great pickups for the deck potentially, both Curious Pair and Witch Stalker. Curious Pair can be an early blocker, is an adventure for both the Innkeeper and it's also a cheap way to make food, to maybe let the Merrily Frider kill something in the early turns, but the Witch Docker also makes food, and it's a 4-4 Trample for 4, which is great. And we don't have much at 4 anyway, so I think in this case I'll take the Witch Docker, and then we can hope to wield the Curious Pair. Uh, other good cards in the pack, of course, all these red uncommons are great, but I don't think we can really splash for them, so I'll just take the Witch Docker. Another didn't say please looks okay. Opt would also be reasonable. There are some red cards I could consider splashing, like the Barrage or the Dragonfire, given that we're splashing it. The Barrage makes more sense, since by the time we have the red mana, we're probably going to be more interested in 5 damage as opposed to 3. Don't think we really want to splash for the Mad Rider, don't have a ton of card draw to enable it. So between an Opt and a another didn't say please, like, again, our deck's not amazing with Didn't Say Please, we don't have a lot of instant speed action, so keeping up mana is a pretty big commitment. But it does synergize with the Gargoyle, and then maybe I get to play the Mystic Sanctuary as well, now that we picked up some extra instants and sorceries. Return to Nature for the sideboard is also a consideration, but we can probably pick one up on the wheel. So I think I'll probably still take the Counterspell for now. Ooh, Trail of Crumbs. Now we don't have a ton of food, so I don't know how good the trail is going to end up being. So cards that make food at the moment. It's basically just Savvy Hunter and Witch Stalker. In that case, the trail is not going to be very good. The Witching Well could be fine. And Witching Well also has good synergy with I Didn't Say Please, since if we keep up for mana, we can either draw cards with the Witching Well or counter something with Didn't Say Please. Not a rider could be okay, but again, without the food, it's a bit underwhelming. So I'll take the Witching Well. And now I'll take the Curious Pair. Oh wow, that's a late Keeper of Fables. Don't mind if I do. Could have used an extra Curve Topper. Don't have a ton of evasive creatures that can enable this, but plays great with a Pixie. Can maybe hope to pick up some other small flyers. 
And at the end of the day, it is just a five mana four five. And I don't think I necessarily need another Curious Spare. Yeah, I'll take the Keeper. Don't know if we'll play the Appetite, but I'm not playing anything else. Squire, maybe. Reaper on the Splash could also be a consideration. Another Felda Pheasants over Dummy. Am I playing Dummy? Don't think I am. Eh, wield another Curious Pair in case we need it against an aggro deck. And the return wields. Perfect. Didn't think I'm playing two Sanctuaries. I might want a second Rider now that we picked up those two Curious Pairs. Could actually be fine. Alright, so I need to make a lot of cuts here. What's our game plan? Our game plan is to try and draw some extra cards, either with the Innkeeper, Witching Well, we've got Adversary, Keeper of Fables, Sage of the Falls. So we do have a decent chunk of card draw effects in the deck. And if we just outdraw our opponent, we can maybe overwhelm them with the amount of extra resources we have. So that's one approach. The mill plan is probably not going to come together very often, unless we're playing against a very slow deck from the opponent, in which case we have double Secret Keeper and Gargoyle that can mill them out. But the Secret Keeper is probably just a fine card, it's just an early blocker. The Adventure is fine with the Innkeeper if we get to draw a card. Uh, it also helps me enable So Tiny as a nice cheap removal spell. And then of course if we just get to attack with a Gargoyle on turn 3 or 4, thanks to the Secret Keepers, that's also good. Then we have a bit of a small food sub-theme, which isn't very well worked out in this deck. We just have the two Curious Pairs and the Savvy Hunter that make food, and I guess the Witch Stalker, but it's not really the the main game plan. So do I even want to play the Savvy Hunter is a question. I have two Acolytes to help me fix for black mana, but that's about it, and I don't think I want to put a ton of swamps in my deck. If I had more food, so I could use the Savvy Hunter to sack two foods and draw a card, I think I would be more into it, because I do need a lot of blue mana for Charm Sleep, didn't say please. So adding swamps to the deck is a pretty big cost, and I can't play this with just the two Acolytes. So I'll leave it in the sideboard. It's possible I can board this in in a very slow matchup where we have the time to find our Splash Caller, but uh, for now I'll leave it out, because we have enough like card draw in the deck already. I don't have to get too desperate for additional ones. Now the question is how many of these Curious Pairs slash Merrily Friders do I want to keep in the deck? And the answer might be that I don't want any of them, since I do have the Secret Keeper as an early blocker, so that makes the Curious Pair less important. Is my deck interested in a 2 mana 3 one? Not really. Could still play Curious Pair just as a 2 mana 1 3 in addition to the Secret Keepers. Adventure for the Innkeeper and the food just gains me a bit of life, which is fine in a more controlling deck like the one we have, but maybe we don't need the Merle Friders, and I can cut them. And go down to one Curious Pair, and our curve looks kind of bad here, but if we put uh, the 1-drops and the 2-drop slots, then it looks more reasonable in terms of early game plays. And then we also have the Witching Well, so Tiny has an early play. So I don't think we need a ton of like 2-mana 1-3s for our deck to survive against aggro. And then our late game, like the reason, of course, to want the uh, Curious Spare as well is that it's an artifact for the Scavengers. But with three so tinies, I think we have enough artifacts slash enchantments for the Scavengers to be fine. Since, of course, if we put a so tiny on the opponent's creatures, we're still the ones controlling the enchantment. So that will still work with the Scavengers. And otherwise, we don't have a ton of top end cards. So I don't mind having it here. But I do still need to make four cards here potentially. So maybe I do just cut the Curious Pair altogether. I could shave a So Tiny, a Cauldron. I guess the Appetite can easily go too, since we don't have any food. So I need to make two more cuts. Maybe I shave one So Tiny. Although So Tiny honestly could be better than Charm Sleep, given the two Secret Keepers and the Gargoyle, and the two Didn't Say Please. Once and Future is also an instance, so that plays well with the Didn't Say Please too. I've got Witching Well and Once and Future as two expensive instance that I can keep up alongside, didn't say please, which is great. I think this is a 17 land deck, since we are pretty mana hungry. So two more cuts. 
Maybe I just cut the cauldron and the charm sleep and keep the three so tinies. It's also possible that the out muscle is worse than the charm sleep. We do have some creatures that can fight pretty well. Even like an acolyte, if we can get this with adamant, turning into a 3-4 can take out something significant from the opponent. Plays well with a gargoyle. So the out muscle is probably good enough. So maybe I cut the charm sleep and keep the so tinies. And then I can always bring in the charm sleep after sideboard if my opponent has some big creatures that I need to tap down. And then the mana base is going to be pretty evenly split between blue and green. I do need double blue on turn 3 sometimes, but I also need green early for my acolytes and cards like Witchstalker is double green. Maybe still go with uh, the extra island for the Mystic Sanctuary too. The out muscle does want adamant sometimes. So that's also an argument for more green mana, but we do have a lot of cheap blue spells as well. So I can potentially survive a while without green mana still. Yeah, it does feel weird to cut the charm sleep, I agree. I think so tiny might just be better in this deck. And I have a lot of like expensive cards already. And I'm not sure what else to cut. I think out muscle is going to be better than the charm sleep overall. The plus one plus one counter can make a pretty big difference. And it's also a sorcery I can get back with the Mystic Sanctuary, whereas I can't get back the Charm Sleep. So yeah, I'll, I'll try this. Let's give it a shot. Alright, pretty land-heavy draw, but Adversary and Gargoyle are both decent, so I'll try it. Probably gonna hang on to the Sanctuary, since we already have two islands. All right, red whites. A ferocity of the wild stack, but no early plays at least to back it up. So this can't attack yet, but it can block. And end of turn, I'm gonna start milling. And that can maybe also set up my Mystic Sanctuary. Alright. If I mill my opponent for 4, I'm still unable to attack. So I'm just gonna play the adversary here. And then next turn I could vision with adamants. So we'll be a 4-4 trampler when attacking. Out muscle I can get back. So I don't mind trading adversary for the ogre errants. And of course I don't mind drawing a card, so I'll send it in there. And then I'm probably gonna vision here. What I could have also done is play Sanctuary before attacking to put out muscle back on top. And then if they let me draw, then of course I could draw the out muscle and kill their ogre errants with my gargoyle. But then they would be more likely to block. Right, Innkeeper's great too. So casting the vision here is not ideal since I would have to even discard to hand size. But what's the alternative? Going Innkeeper, milling my opponent with the Secret Keeper. But the Secret Keeper doesn't block the Ogre once it gains uh, plus one and trample. Because yeah, Mystic Sanctuary plus Ventress Gargoyle is a bit of a nombo. Eh, I'll just do this now. Take action. Vision. And then... Let's see here. Do I want a counter spell? Yeah, I think I do. Do I need more lands? Do I want a Sage of the Falls? That seems reasonable too. Five toughness blocks the ogre. Question is, which order do I want to draw these? I guess if I want to mill with the gargoyle, I should keep the land on top anyway, just to mill it. And then, what's my play next turn? I'm likely to out muscle. 
play Innkeeper, maybe keep up so tiny. Uh, I guess I'll put the Counterspell first. And uh, say go. End of turn. We'll have to discard to hand size. Can probably ditch an island. And then mill with Gargoyle, which gets rid of the islands, which I don't want to draw. And against red-white, milling the opponent should not be a huge issue, so there's no drawback to doing it. And then the So Tiny is also turned on thanks to the Secret Keeper. That's fine. So I could trade this Gargoyle for the Ogre. Don't know if I want to do that. Can probably take four. Are we far enough ahead on board where we can just sit on our counterspell for the rest of the game, or do I need to tap out this turn? If I want to keep up my counterspell, I still have three mana to play with, which could be enough for Innkeeper plus Pixie. Could also just kill this Archon, attack with my adversary, draw more cards, which is also reasonable. Maybe I should just start there, pay the one, attack with the adversary. Could even attack with a Gargoyle if I mill my opponent for four, but then I have to pay two. Given that we have so many cards in hand, I don't want to like try and outrace my opponent necessarily. I'm fine playing a longer game. So with that information, I think I'm just going to play it slow. Which in this case means keeping up uh, my counter spell. And if I want to, I could trade my adversary for the ogre. 5 2 hastes. That's fine. Can always so tiny, of course, at instant speed. Egg for red. Is this the rat cap? Deal for damage. Oh no, claim the firstborn, trying to steal my pixie. That's fine. Thanks with all. So, Paladin gains Menace. And what do I want to so tiny? I can so tiny the Ogre and then block it with Adversary, that seems reasonable. Or I can shrink down the Archon so the Gargoyle survives. I think I'd rather have the Gargoyle than Adversary in play at this point. So I guess that means I should do this. And take 8, plus another Trample damage. Seems fine. And then I don't really want to mill the Sage, since I'm happy drawing it. So I won't activate the Gargoyle. The Pixie could just trade for the Paladin, I could outmuscle it. And then still keep up my Counterspell, maybe that's the best approach here. And then... What do I outmuscle with? Probably the Pixie. Make sure to pay Adamants. So Gargoyle can attack. So we'll just send everyone. And if they just play one big creature, we can counter it and kill them with our next attack. Don't think I need to counter it. So we'll just attack with our Gargoyle and Pixie. Opponent is at 1. Just want to make sure we keep up our Counterspell here at all costs. So I guess this works. Secret Keeper would have drawn a card with the Innkeeper there, but just keeping the counter spell and the removal spell seems safer. Yeah, Gargoyle's definitely a powerful card. 5 4 Flyer basically in the late game, although you're probably committed to attacking with it for the most part. So it could just take 3. If they have a lethal burn spell, I can just counter it. Barge in, still doesn't kill me. Hmm. 
All right. I guess soul so tiny. And attack with all. So they would have had lethal there. But we got to see a few more instant speed uh, tricks from my opponent, which is useful for game two here. So yeah, that game also showcased why so tiny at instant speed can be quite valuable in this type of deck where we can mill the opponent for a little bit to enable it, as opposed to a charm sleep, which is kind of a clunky version of it. Any changes for the next game? So this is a matchup where Curious Pair could be okay just as an early blocker. Uh, Merrily Frider could also be serviceable just to kind of trade off in the early turns. What do I want to cut if I want to make room for some Curious Pairs? Could cut some of the card draw spells like Vision or Witching Well. I guess I like Witching Well more since it plays better with our counter spells. Um, Scavengers should still be okay. Could see cutting the Once and Future as well, which is kind of more a slow grindy card. And our opponent's looking to kill us quickly. Return to Nature had a few targets in that game, but not really convinced we need it. Didn't see a ton of flyers, so I don't need the Felda Pheasants. But I could just bring in the two Curious Pairs. Or I could go one Curious Pair, one Cauldron. Although Cauldron can be sketchy against Pump Spells. I guess I'll try this. And a Curious Pair also has synergy with Innkeeper, of course, which is nice. Yeah, opponent disconnecting is a, a more likely explanation. Well, that's too bad, we don't get to play a second game. But I'll take it. So we're on the draw. Don't know if I can keep this. We need double blue for Dense, please. Like, the sand would be very good if we do draw an island, because then Secret Keepers enable Gargoyle. But it's probably a bit too sketchy. This is better. I could bottom the Secret Keeper, which, while it does enable so tiny, might not be necessary, since I have Acolyte as an early blocker, and then Tree Folk as kind of a late-game curve topper. Don't need to shrink it down quite yet. Alright, Pathlighter is scary. That's definitely one of those cards that um, you actually need to kill and shrinking it down is not good enough. So, probably save the out muscle for it. And Gargoyle was good, but I can just play Acolyte and then um, next turn I could already out muscle the Pathlighter before it does too much damage, although I guess they have a Cauldron, so that complicates matters a bit. So maybe I'm supposed to just play Gargoyle. And then hope it doesn't die, and then hope to draw land for out muscle. They could of course attack and then trade two for one their Cauldron and one of their Flyers for the Gargoyle, in which case I'll happily take that trade. Eh, they're just going to put some counters on their creatures, that's fine. And there's a land, so... Don't think I want to mess around with this Pathlighter, just... Kill it. And say go. Innkeeper's nice with our Acolytes, so I can go Innkeeper into Acolytes and at least draw a card before they kill my Innkeeper since it's on cast and not on Andrew's Battlefield. So yeah, the, the Hushbringer doesn't stop my Innkeeper in any way. Seems fine. Alright, Secret Keeper. If my innkeeper survives, I'll get to draw some more cards. And that helps me attack with the gargoyle as well. Sure. Bake into a pie, that's a good one to know about, and another out muscle. 
don't think I need to outmuscle anything right now. Now the one issue with milling the opponent with Secret Keeper first is that they then can kill my Innkeeper in response before I get to cast the Secret Keeper and then I won't get to draw a card. And my opponent already has four cards in Graveyard so I don't think we have to mill them for four here and I would rather just cast this to draw my card right away. That's a good one to have. Because the board is stable, we're drawing extra cards, so keeping up counter spells in the spot is fine. End of turn, can mill with a gargoyle. And uh, I could so tiny the commander if I want to be mana efficient, but I guess I can wait. Don't really get to do anything else this turn if I want to keep up my didn't say please. I could just step out for vision and then still have so tiny up which might be good enough to be honest when we still have an out muscle in hand as well. All right I actually do want to land since I didn't draw any. But I also want to mill with the Gargoyle, so I guess I'll keep both lands on top. And then Keeper of Fable seems like a fine addition, especially with the Pixie being able to attack. So we'll top all three and pass the turn. So we're in pretty good shape. But my opponent does have a one turn window to potentially uh, resolve something. Alright, that's a pretty decent one. Although Adversary plus Out Muscle can still kill it. So that's probably the plan. I guess Gargoyle can also Out Muscle it. But I will need to tap the Acolyte in order to do so. And then I can attack my opponent with a gargoyle. It is indestructible, so the Hushbringer can't kill it. And I can basically keep up this counter spell for the rest of the game until they try and kill my gargoyle. Or play something that uh, trumps it. Don't need to do anything else for now. Now the Witch Stalker doesn't make a food because of Hushbringer, so maybe I want to play something else first. That's fine. Now I guess I'll play the Witch Stalker. Let's see what they can find off the top. But uh, Contender doesn't really interfere with the Gargoyle beatdown plan, which is the only card we really care about protecting. Alright, Sir Ellen does hit pretty hard, but again, doesn't mess with my Gargoyle too much. Cottage to get back. Maybe a Flying Chum Blocker or the Roving Keep. Fair enough. What I can do here is. Tree Folk, put two counters on Gargoyle, and then have a two trunk lock. And then I will still be able to keep up my didn't say please. Don't need to counter the roving keep even. But yeah, now the, the next couple turns are scripted. I'm gonna make this nine power attack. They're gonna play roving keep, and then they're just gonna be dead. I could so tiny something, but I don't think I even need to show them. All right, so that game went well up against Black White Knights. Can take another look at their graveyard here. I guess maybe it was worth it to counter the Roving Keep just to see three more cards from the opponent's uh, graveyard, but they could have conceded before this resolved and then 
they would have seen the counter spell, but I wouldn't have seen any cards from their graveyard. So yeah, black white knights, some removal, double scalding cauldron, bake into a pie. Don't think I need return to nature, although I guess besides the cauldron it also kills a roving keep. So return to nature could be fine. Uh, curious pair doesn't line up amazingly well against some of their threats, but it can block like the smitten swordmaster early. Do I need Felda Pheasant? They did play two flyers, but they were all pretty small. So there's nothing in particular that I want to bring in. Do I need Charmed Sleep? Not really. And opponent has a decent chunk of removal, so I don't mind keeping in kind of the grindy card draw cards here, like Once and Future, Vision, and the Witching Well. If they show me one more good artifact or enchantment, I'll bring in the Return to Nature. Because it does indeed have some utility too with the graveyard since they're playing black and they had a Witch's Cottage. So against an opponent playing black, there is a bit of downside, of course, to milling them. But I do want to set up the So Tiny, so I'll still go for it here. That could be an issue if it gains flying. Opponent's got priority with one black mana. Could be a Lash of Thorns, could be another Swordmaster. Or maybe a Scalding Cauldron that they don't want to play out. So the Hushbringer does affect my Witch Stalker. There's a Cauldron, so that gives Fox flying. And they had a Swordmaster too. I guess playing Witch Stalker's fine, even without the food. And then I might end up using the So Tiny on the Fox. The one risk of using the adventure from the tree folk is if my opponent has a memory theft here and then takes a tree folk and a card from my hand, but of course I can just play the so tiny at instant speed on the commander to get some value, so I don't mind uh, putting some counters on my creatures here. And then what I could do is attack with a witch stalker if my opponent blocks with commander so tiny it and then still trample over. And then I'll still have the Acolyte on defense to block the Swordmaster so they don't gain any life. So we're all in on this Witch Stalker, which could uh, be bad if they have a bake into a pie but then we'll still have the Tree Folk as well as another threat. Nah, I guess I'll can attack with both. And then just play Tree Folk, which for three mana they're unlikely to kill. Nah, fair enough, Tactician. Opponent stuck on three, although there's land four, so now we could be in trouble if they have some good removal. Out Muscle was a great draw. Points at 22. They only have single white, so they can't play Tactician. Killing the Swordmaster is nice. Opponent will gain three since it is a fight. But then I can still play Pixie afterwards. And then I can let the Acolyte fight to have a 3 4 left over. It's probably better than putting even more counters on my big stuff.
Now the Flutter Fox can chump my Tree Folk for a turn. That's acceptable. Not really at risk of dying on the way back. So we're looking good. Point will be facing two lethal threats. Point on gain two. And scoops it up. Alright, so we got there in two games against the Black White Knights. Right, let's keep it up. Be on the play. Hmm, don't think I can keep this hand. This is better. And then probably bottom of forests. And then I could be attacking with a gargoyle pretty soon here. We've got the mill synergy hand. Up against the blue black could be some sort of mill deck as well, featuring eye collector. Ooh, Folio Fancies. Well, not too effective when we're on the play and already mulliganed. So, can't quite attack with the Gargoyle. Don't know if I should actually play the Secret Keeper here, because if I draw my Innkeeper, then I get to draw a card, and it's only preventing one damage at the moment. So, we'll just say go. I'm also milling myself, but I do need to mill them a little bit more before I can attack. Which I would like to do. This opponent has five cards right now. Even if they counter my Acolyte with a didn't say please, they would still only have six, so I still don't get to attack. But yeah, might as well play this first. Sure. So next turn I can attack. Innkeeper is gone, so I don't really have a reason to hold the Secret Keeper as much. The Sage of the Falls would have been another reason, but that's milled as well. So I guess now I can play it. Unless I wanted to keep up so tiny, which uh, I don't think I wanted to. If they can kill the Gargoyle, we don't really have a game plan, so hopefully that doesn't happen. Sure. Alright, let's see if this uh, four-turn clock on the gargoyle gets the job done. Although my opponent could easily still have removal in hand, but they just wanted to make me discard first, as I had exactly two cards in hand. That's a very good one. Let's get to draw four. So not very likely that the gargoyle gets across the finish line. And then my opponent will eventually stabilize and take over the late game. One uh, forest short of playing that would have been pretty nice here. That's a chum blocker. Two chum blockers. So my opponent bought themselves a lot of extra time. Alright, that's a good draw. Now 
Now it's possible, again, that they did have removal in hand, but since I kept up 4 mana, they wanted to play around a counterspell, and uh, therefore didn't go for it right away. But I think I'm kind of forced to play the adversary here, because we don't have anything else going on. And yeah, Murderous Rider is a pretty good removal spell. So this is a draw stop uh, folio activation to mill me. Don't need to cast a so tiny quite yet. Well, not too far off uh, milling the opponent here, although outside of the secret keepers, and I guess two didn't say please, I don't have any other ways of milling. But I guess I'll still go for it here. Now what I could do is not cast the Secret Keeper half of the card, which also kind of signals a didn't say please in hand. And they might play around it to my benefit. Sure. So they block the adversary, we can so tiny the Reaper. Could so tiny now. In case I draw Forest, I get to play Keeper next turn. Yeah, it's probably worth it. Wrong one. Still worth it to play out our land, I think. Alright, we're on empty. Opponent has all the cards in the world. They can start milling me with a folio. Opponent has 9 cards left. We have 16. So the way to win this game is probably through my counter spells. Mystic Sanctuary normally very good, but with folio they can just uh, mill me and get rid of the card I keep on top. If I was empty-handed, I could set this up. Right now what would I be getting back anyway? Once in future would be pretty decent. So I probably have to hold this even though that means they get to mill me for more with the folio. Yeah, uh, this is a close decision. I'll attack with adversary. Yeah sure. I've got two secret keepers to block stuff on the ground so... I don't mind getting rid of their flyer and just say go for now. And then hopefully I can empty my hands and get some value out of the Sanctuary before it's too late. Opponent lets me draw two. That's generous. The Reaper to make me discard. That's uh, less generous. So they probably have their own counterspell in hand. So the question is, do I want to make them use it here? Or do I comply and discard two cards? They can probably keep up their didn't say please for the rest of the game, so I don't think we're gonna get a much better window. Alright, that worked. So opponent's down to three cards, and they don't have any pressure, I'm at 19, so... You're saying there's a chance. I have 13 cards remaining, but I'm just gonna empty my hand here. So the folio doesn't kill me. Eight cards left versus three. Possible I should have played the Sanctuary there just to put an extra card on top so I don't somehow get milled out, but I think we're safe. Ooh, never mind. Secret Keeper, mill for four. Secret Keeper, O for blocker. All right, opponent let me Go to my main phase. Put this back on top. Opponent's gonna mill me for two in response. So I'll go down to one card. So I guess they can force a draw here. Yeah, I think I just have to empty my hand here. Because otherwise I just die to the folio. Can't really play around, didn't say please. Well, 
Runaway, Bound Secret Keeper. Yeah, that should do it. I have two cards left. Opponent has two cards left, so they'll draw for their draw step, mill me out, and I'll lose with my opponent having one card left. Do I know what this last card is? I guess I do. It's a forest from the the mulligan. Yeah, we got pretty close. The folio forces a draw and uh, wins him the game. So I wonder if I maybe messed up by holding the Mystic Sanctuary for too long and I could have maybe put it in play earlier. Of course I would have died to the Secret Keeper Mill 4 anyway, so I, I didn't think it mattered much. So yeah, Return to Nature seems like a fine inclusion. Um, probably don't need to Charm Sleep. Merrily Frider doesn't attack past 0-4. Cauldron doesn't kill Reaper. Could go above 40 cards, but there's not that much I want to bring in, to be honest. Yeah, I could splash black for Forever Young. That's a reasonable approach. And then I probably want a couple swamps in my deck. Two swamps. And maybe just play this. 44 cards. I added two spells and two lands. Maybe I can cut one land. Yeah, I'll try this. And against Mill, do I want to be on the play or the draw? Could be fine to be on the draw. Yeah, sure. And this is a good looking hand. When is it appropriate to add 160 lands to counter Mill? When they literally have no win condition other than milling me. But they do have Reapers and other creatures that can attack and block, so... Ooh, nice mill there into the story. It's definitely one of their high impact cards. Also want to think about Adamant here for both of my cards. So I don't have double blue. So I can't mill and play Secret Keeper. What could I get back with One Cent Future? I could get back a Counterspell, a Rose Thorn. So that could be interesting too. But maybe I'm supposed to wait until Adamant. And for now just mill them for four. I can uh, kill that. Maybe I should kill it now in response to the scry before they get a chance to play lands. So now I can draw three with vision or I can want some future with adamant which would get me a counter spell and Probably like a Rose Thorn or the 4-5. The Could even get back the Mystic Sanctuary. Which is kind of interesting too, but um, I need more islands for that to work. I'll just play Secret Keeper and then end of turn the once in future in case they picked up a counter spell. But I don't think they did from the way they played. So maybe I should cast it now. Get my didn't say please. Maybe just my return to nature. In case of folio. So 
So I'm still lacking double blue for my counter spell. So there was a reason to get the Acolyte. 20 cards remaining. Not really pressuring my opponent is the issue here. Opponent is missing black. We milled a lot of swamps as well. Right, Forever Young is great. And now I can still play my well. And don't need more islands, I don't think. Adversary is fine. Even though the fact that it draws when it hits is sometimes a drawback against the mill deck. So we've got some nice tools here. Counterspell, answer for folio. Forever young to get some creatures back. And my opponent concedes. Alright, I'll take it. Maybe a bit premature, but... Uh, any changes for in game 3? It's possible I want to bring in the Merrily Friders anyway, but again, they are kind of poor against the 04. Nothing else that really attacks all that profitably. Like maybe the Lockthwain Gargoyle as a two power flyer could be better than one of my removal spells. And it's possible that the Charm Sleep is better than a So Tiny in this matchup, because like the, the creature I'm trying to target is probably like the Reaper, which is kind of annoying if they can still block with it. The plus one counter from Out Muscle is relevant, so I think I still want it, even though it's worse against instant speed interaction from my opponents. I don't hate the Gargoyle just as a way to pressure. And what do I cut? Or do I just add a couple lands? Now let's add another land. Just add a few cards overall. But you never know, my opponent might have sided out some of their mill cards in favor of just a more regular draw, in which case I will need my removal. So there's a lot of mind games when it comes to sideboarding against mill decks too. Opponent's deciding. Opponent will be on the play. And yeah, this is a pretty ugly hand, so we'll mulligan. This is better. Much better. Now, the million dollar question. Do I put Forever Young on the bottom? Probably not, and just bottom the out muscle, but... Well, lots of uh, paid actors today. New match. We're on the draw. This hand's great with the forests. I have eight forests in the deck, I believe. Definitely a risky one. So two draw steps and this hand is amazing. If we hit forest, three draw steps to hit forest and this hand is still fine. Four draw steps and it's still salvageable. Five draw steps is probably too late. I think I'm gonna risk it. All right, nice. Opponent does have a nice aggressive start here, not willing to trade a Flutter Fox. But now I have So Tiny at the ready. All that glitters. Sure. Eh, opponent's got a nice aggressive uh, white tack here. I guess it makes more sense to keep Acolyte on defense than the Pixie. Or of course I could also just attack. Yeah, I guess I'm better off attacking with the Pixie here. And discard probably Islands. So I wouldn't mind drawing my Secret Keeper 
to shrink down the fox some more. Don't really want to play a second so tiny on it. They can't pump this defensively yet. So I guess I'll play Acolyte first. See what I draw. Out Muscles, potentially very good too. Let's discard land since we've got plenty of mana thanks to our Acolytes and Pixie. Still have a so tiny up in case I do have some tricks. Opponent stuck on three, maybe missing a color as well. I wouldn't mind killing the gargoyle with out muscle, get a potential flyer out of the way for the future. And the extra counter could be valuable too, of course. And then where do we put the counter? Could be the pixie, just to have the extra power on our flyer. Not gonna pay adamants, since they want to attack with acolytes. No. That's a bit of a strange block since they could have blocked an acolyte pumped to trade. So don't quite get that. And opponent packs it up. Alright. So don't quite know what they're playing. It's an aggressive white artifact slash enchantment based deck, but they could easily have a second color that they weren't able to find in time. So, Fell the Pheasants is okay against the Flutterfox, and it can get the Gargoyle if they give it flying. Return to Nature can destroy the All That Glitters or a Gargoyle. And then a Curious Pair could be an extra cheap blocker, although with the two Secret Keepers we're doing okay in that department as well. Uh, this is probably a matchup where I can consider shaving some of my card draw effects, like the Once and Future and the Vision. Still have the Witching Well, and then I think I'll make room for a Return and a Fell. Seems okay. Charm Sleep could also be okay here, just to shut down a large creature that's enchanted. But we still have Triple So Tiny doing a similar thing, and the Instant Speed is quite nice too. This hand's okay. I've got the Well to dig me towards a land. Opponent is blue-white. Makes sense. I guess I can still play well first. Dig for maybe one of my secret keepers and then next turn go innkeeper plus secret keeper in the same turn. Alright, so I don't know quite what to do with this return to nature. Could be good, could be bad. I do know that I want to draw some extra lands. So I think I'll keep this so tiny and bottom the return for now which I may end up regretting, but... All right. Don't really want to trade yet. Could shrink it down. Sure. Because I also don't really want to block with my Acolyte. And then I'll be ramping into a Keeper. And the dummy will have dealt quite a bit of damage in the meantime. Alright, Shine Chaser. Good target for the Out Muscle, potentially. Let's say they put the enchantment on it, they'll have a total of three artifacts slash enchantments, so this will be a 5-5, so it still dies to Keeper plus out Muscle. Although never mind, this will pick up an extra plus one plus one from the Shine Chaser. So then it would be a 6-6, six, six. so then it wouldn't die to the Keeper anymore. So maybe I should out Muscle now. Of course I could Keeper and then Tree Folk and then out Muscle. It's gonna take a couple turns, so... 
I think I'll play it safe since this feels like one way I could lose. And I'm probably fight with Acolyte still. And then I can attack or I can mill to enhance my so tinies and gargoyle. Seems more relevant for now. I guess Innkeeper should have attacked there, no reason not to. I mill the giant killer, good to know about. Drawbridge. Back up so tiny. Alright. Sir Eleonora is definitely a good one. So the keeper could attack. Opponent doesn't have any great blocks. And then I can play some adventure creatures afterwards. Seems fine. Probably see them chump with a dummy. Unless they want to keep it in play for all that glitters. Which is reasonable too. Can't forget about my witching well. That can draw me some more cards too. Right, perfect. Get to play the islands, so I don't have to play Sanctuary yet, which can get back out muscle at some point. Point's gonna hang back. Can't so tiny Sir Eleonora, since it costs two more. Fell the pheasants. Not quite what I need, but could be useful later. So Point's got five mana up, represents all sorts of instant speed tricks. So yeah, we'll start by attacking with Keeper. And if they block with Eleonora, I'll shrink it down. And then we'll see what they want to do next. And of course, if they do have a counter spell, they'll only have four cards left in hand and I will still eat Sir Eleonora. And then... I think I'm supposed to hang on to the Sanctuary since it's so good without muscle. And then I guess I'll main phase draw with the Witching Well to hit my land drop. Alright, perfect. So next turn the Sanctuary can get back out Muscle. Spinning Wheel. That's a nice one. And Arcanist Owl. Finds all that glitters. Alright. So. We do have the Felda Pheasant to kill Owl in response. Which is going to be quite nice. There's no harm in putting the Out Muscle on top of my deck first here. And then. Acolyte and Keeper can attack. I get to play Pixie and keep up Felda Pheasants. Could also just out muscle now. Which might be even safer, but this could lead to a nice blowout, so. This is the kinda cute slash uh, fancy play, which might come back to bite me if they have a counter spell for this Felda Pheasants. Alright, the cute play worked out. And... Opponent's close to dead. Don't really have to out-muscle. Sandkeeper and Pixie. So 
So the only card I lose to at this point is probably Realm Cloak Giants. So should I even play the Tree Folk? Nah, I think I'm good. Is this maybe a Dance of Demands? Looks like it, so maybe I'll lose to that instead. Alright, so now I'm regretting not playing the Tree Folk. I guess Dance is a rare and Realm Cloak Giant is a mythic, so it makes more sense to play around the rare, which does fit quite nicely into their deck. Alright, no counter spells here. It's not like the Tree Folk would have attacked, but yeah, that's a good one for sure. Guess I might as well sag the food. Yeah, maybe that was wrong because I do have the uh, the six drop that bounces, requiring an artifact or enchantment in play. So yeah, we're in a bit of trouble here. Can I hope to mill them out? Point's got 13 cards left, so maybe that's my win condition now. Which means I need to deal with the flyers and kind of just hold the grounds. So this turn I could play Tree Folk and then out muscle the 4 4 flyer. And then Pixie can attack and draw a card with Keeper. Alright. Maybe this is a change of plan. Drawing a card here with Pixie seems worth it. Yeah, I think I'll still go for it. We'll out muscle with. I don't know. Keeper, I guess. That's a good one to have up as well. Maybe I should have put the counter on the Secret Keeper to have a 1-5 to block the 4 fours profitably. But I already have three pretty decent blockers here, so... Should be okay. They could activate the drawbridge, but it looks like they're gonna play defense. Alright, so opponent's got 10 cards remaining. I still have a second secret keeper in my library, didn't say please, mills for three. So milling them seems pretty realistic. I do not have any great attack. Like maybe with a so tiny I can mess up a double block. So it could be worth it to kind of force the issue here. But my game plan is clearly just to mill them at this point. So attacking would only be good for drawing cards with Keeper of Fables. Yeah, I don't think attacking really benefits me here. Sure. Probably should just shrink that down. Sure. I could counter it just to mill them, but don't think that's necessary and this should lock things up here. I guess it can block at the moment, so that's definitely a reason to keep uh, land in hand too. It's mostly the milling that's important here. Alright, so Gargoyle is a nice mana sink. So I guess now if they put a spell on the stack I'm happy to counter. All 
Uh, not the spell I thought I would be countering, but... And yep, Gargoyle can untap, mill them, and uh, that's the game. So yeah, I thought I was, I was super far ahead, even played around the Mythic Sweeper. Turns out they had a Dance of the Mance, which, you know, definitely a card to keep in mind as well, especially when playing against a blue-white artifact deck, which is uh, more likely to have it in their deck. But uh, we got there regardless, so for no, time for the final boss. Alright, so we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Turn to Pixie is great. And then we can refuel with our vision. Alright, Mantle of the Tide, so this could be a blue-red draw 2 deck. Blue-red confirmed. Hypnotic Sprite's a good one to know about. So we'll make sure to play out our islands first for Adamant. think I'll keep up three mana. Hold the Secret Keeper until we actually need a blocker, or until I draw my Innkeeper to draw me a card. Alright, that's a lot of lands. Can get rid of them with a Sage, so that's good. So I guess I'll draw Sage first, followed by Witch Stalker. Do I need an Acolyte afterwards? It does just draw a card with a Sage in play if it resolves. Sage also reason to hold the Secret Keeper. And then Keeper plus Pixie is also a nice combo. So our hand's not great, but if we don't get milled, we'll have some nice follow-ups. Right, Mystic Sanctuary doesn't get back anything. Sage or Keeper. They didn't have a counterspell last turn. I think I'll keep her first. They might just have a bounce spell. Okay. That could have been ugly if they had some way to pump it. Alright, opponent concedes, unable to find red mana. It's unfortunate. So we can take another peek here at their graveyard. So I didn't see much. Couple adventure creatures. Fairy Vandal, but they definitely have a draw to theme in their deck somewhere. So anything that we want to be bringing in. Fell the Pheasant can kill their two flyers. Return to nature in case they have a improbable alliance or 40 equipments. But those are all pretty narrow. Uh, Scalding Cauldron could be okay since they're kind of a small aggro deck, but it can also help us deal with the flyers. So I could see shaving one of the top-end draw cards in favor of something cheaper. So I'll cut Vision in favor of Cauldron. Curious Pairs may be better than Cauldron, but this can deal with the flyers too at least. We'll try this. And yeah, the sand seems fine. Missing the double blue for the counter spell, but I've got Gargoyle, which in the early turns can block, and then so tiny has more removal. Uh, don't quite need to shrink that down. So plus one, plus one, and first strike if they draw an extra card. If they do attack anyway, we'll have to think for a second, because they could have like a Rimrock Knight, in which case I might want to take it and then use my So Tiny next turn. 
Yeah, I kind of need this gargoyle to survive. So I don't want to take the risk. So they did have merchants to grow this once. And it's so tiny as well. Doesn't quite explain their attack yet, so they could still have a Rimrock Knight in hand, for example. Yeah, that makes sense too, but now we got a nice two for one. Yeah, our opponent definitely should have d let damage happen first and then use a removal spell. If they did go to damage, I probably would have been forced to use a so tiny in case what they had was indeed a burn spell. But yeah, that's a good lesson to let damage happen first. Exactly for this reason. That would have been a nice draw. So my opponent has five cards, so can't quite attack with the uh, gargoyle here. But it's probably worth it to play the Keeper of Fables when my opponent's stuck on two lands. And then next turn we can get them. They did find a third land at least. Alright, they did have an improbable alliance, so... Game's not over yet. So six cards in Graveyard still can't quite attack. But uh, the Keeper can attack, which is good enough. And once in future, can probably hold that for now. The Gargoyle can also maybe give us a better target. End of turn here. Yeah, this being an instant does make it significantly better. Especially alongside blue counter spells. Zoom Raider. I actually feel okay countering this. So they don't get a fairy token from Alliance. And we get to hit them for nine. And then I can get back my counter spell. Or draw another one. I guess it works too. Alright, we got there, so did have a couple of uh, non-games along the way. Which is unfortunate, but uh, yeah, Vantress Gargoyle did a ton of work in this draft. Definitely a very impressive uh, card after playing with it a few times. Let's crack some packs. Ooh, Torbran. Definitely a very powerful card. We did have a draft where we made Torbran work, so... Even though it's not the easiest to cast, the reward is definitely there. The Fireborn Knight is also great, Clover's great, so a lot of very first pickable cards. Charming Prince, also a reasonable card. Not sure if I would take it over Bake into a Pie Pack 1 pick 1 though. Ooh, the Cauldron of Eternity. Well, we've seen a lot of grindy games in this format, and Cauldron can definitely outgrind an opponent. And the fact that this puts creatures on the bottom can actually be a benefit against the mill decks. So Cauldron is, I think, very good, although I haven't been able to play with it much. Trail of Crumbs, also a great first pick, since you can kind of build around it. Reef Soul, nice cheap removal spell. So a lot of good cards here.
and the Circle of Loyalty. Very good card too. Probably take it over the Casket, which is probably the next best card over the Charm Sleep. I'll take uh, the best Mythic in the set, otherwise probably the Reef Soul over Once in Future, but I have been pretty impressed with Once in Future, so it wouldn't surprise me if uh, in a couple weeks I would take this over the Reef Soul. And Gadwig the Wizens. Well, if you can start your draft with this, it's definitely a nice incentive to be heavy blue. Nothing amazing in the pack anyway, so yeah, I would not mind taking Gadwig here. Right, we even unlocked a vault. By the way, if um, anyone wants some sort of use for all their common and uncommon wild cards, what I did before opening any boosters of Eldraine is just to get the entire set of commons and uncommons from Eldraine. That way, when you start opening boosters of the new set, instead of having these useless commons and uncommon wild cards sitting there, you're actually slowly but surely adding some progress to the vault. Because even though it's only a very tiny percentage, if you do open duplicates, commons and uncommons, they still work towards the vault. So that basically means you're sacrificing a lot of common and uncommon wild cards. So, of course, you can only do this if uh, you have a lot of them. But you're basically converting those into a couple rare and mythic wild cards. So, yeah, I think I would recommend doing so. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.